So once you've chosen your microphone, we need to address it. And some mics are front address mics like this, where the business part of the microphone is perpendicular to you and wants its sound coming in from the end here. Not so with these guys. You don't address them like this. They're side address mics. Now, a front address mic like this is a no-brainer in terms of where you sing into it, right? But what about this one? Is there a difference between this side or this side? Well, maybe so. There are some microphones that have a figure eight pattern where they, you can address them from either side, but most either have a, it most will have a live side and a dull side. In a cardioid pattern like this, the back lobe of this is gonna reject sound, so you don't wanna be singing in to, to that side here. Its job is to pick up from here and reject the sound of the room on the other side. So anyway, let's see this in practice. Okay, so let's talk about uh, mic technique and using various different microphones. Let me go over to the SM58. Okay, so should be hearing me from the SM58 now. We've said before that a lot of microphones, vocal microphones, are cardioid pattern. That means that from the front, you're hearing me very clearly. If I go around the back, then you can hear that that drops back, drops off a whole lot. This is really great in a live situation because quite often your monitors are right at your feet, which is the most deaf part of the microphone. So that's a great way of rejecting feedback there. But in a, in a live situation, um, you know, it's a great way to uh, address that microphone and reject a lot of the, the, the sound of the room. Both of these are cardioid patterns. Let's switch over to this guy. Okay, and so this is the uh, V67G, the uh, MXL. And uh, again, this is a cardioid pattern. I go around the back of it and it drops off a lot. That's the most deaf part of the microphone, which is great because it'll, it'll kind of reject a lot of what's going on in the room. Now, one thing to, um, to think about in terms of um, cardioid microphones is they exhibit a particular... Um, effect. It's called the proximity effect. And because uh, they designed these microphones to be kind of deaf on the back, the lobe really, really thins out on the back. Um, the closer you get to a, um, a cardioid microphone, you'll get the proximity effect. So um, listen to the level of my lows as I get closer and closer. If I get right up there, then you'll hear that you'll get a lot of that kind of radio announcer voice. So if you ever do any voiceovers and things like that, use that proximity effect uh, to benefit uh, you and really get up on that microphone. And the same thing will happen uh, on this SM58. Okay, so another thing you might be thinking, why do I have this upside down? Well, I'm glad you asked about that. Do me a favor and grab uh, your hand and put it about here and just... Uh, start doing P's and B's, P's, B's, K's, all those plosives. Um, you'll notice that you can feel that right there on your on your hand. That's below. It's the way your mouth is is set up. It it is uh, throwing all of these plosives down. If you put it up like this, and then go P's, B's, and P's, B's, you'll notice that you'll miss that. So. This is the business part of the microphone here. It doesn't matter whether the microphone is situated this way or that way. This is the capsule that we're actually speaking in or singing into. So why not have it pivoted the other way so that any of those plosives can, uh, if it was put down here, those plosives would be hitting the chassis of the microphone and you may start getting some of that, uh, um, those ugly P's and B's coming in there. Speaking of that, Want to get invest in one of these for sure pop filter um you can pick you know one up at your local music store if you want to go the macgyver route you can always use a uh, a stocking over a a wire clothes hanger either way that'll do uh, um, that'll do basically the same uh, trick which is to slow down those plosives that will come through and really peg your meters and things like that so uh, a good pop filter is a way to go. Another thing to think about in terms of sibilance is, you know, the S's uh, and T's and things like that. If you're um, getting a little bit too much of that, just adjusting the, the axis of the microphone just a little bit can really uh, cut down uh, on that. But that's kind of pretty much everything we need to know in terms of addressing the microphone. One last thing I, I will suggest is that uh, you get into some good mic technique. In other words, when you you know really use the distance of your uh, of where you are to the microphone 
uh, to, to kind of tame your dynamics. You do want to be up on the microphone and um, and really take out the room like we've said before. But if you're going to be really hitting a big note, then when you come to that point, just lean back off of the microphone for that big note. It'll really help, uh, you know, in terms of your dynamic range and and because uh, um, otherwise you'll have to set levels for that big note and the rest of your track will drop down a lot where if you can just back off for a big note that really really helps